Welcome everybody to the Better Call Saul finale review. That's right. Better Call Saul season 6 episode 13 entitled Saul Gone. I am so excited to discuss this one with you guys. Um this was such a fantastic episode and right off the bat I'm going to give you my score. This was, in my opinion, a 10 out of 10 episode. And we are going to go through this, maybe not the entire episode, but most of it, and try to, um, you know, understand, not understand, but appreciate, like, the culmination of this series and the great bookend that this episode has been. They truly stuck the landing on this one. Hats off to Peter Gould, Vince Gilligan, Bob Odin, Kirk Ray Seahorn, and the entire Better Call Saul cast and crew. This was an amazing production, and I was such a fan uh, the entire way through. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's fantastic. So, let's start off going through the episode. We have... So, uh, Saul and Mike, they are out in the desert. This is a callback to an earlier season where they are trekking through. They're having to drink their own urine. It's it's pretty bad. Um, but they finally find some water here, and they uh they have a conversation about time travel. It's the uh, there's two conversations and one more reference to time travel and regrets and um the things you could change if you could go back in time um and in this moment uh mike says originally he says the thing he would change is you know he would go back to the day his son died but then he thinks back and he realizes he would undo everything. He would go all the way back to the time he took his first bribe so that, you know, none of these events unfolded in the way that they did due to him, you know, not being corrupt. And there's a lot of redemption happening in this episode. Um, as we go on, we'll see that. Particularly in one moment, I want to get to it a little later, I want to kind of talk about this Saul and Mike moment, because we touch on one of Saul's big motivations, because he says he would go back in time, invest money in, you know, uh, some Warren Buffett deal, Berkshire or something, and uh, and basically be like the world's first trillionaire or something. And there's a lot of talk about money in this episode and doing things for money and how that is not like the only thing that is important and not the you know shouldn't be the main motivation the main motivation should be fulfillment and trying to do something good uh anyways mike and saul are talking here and mike really opens up to him during this conversation it's it's a pretty great scene it's it's nice that Mike is like willing to and you know at this point he hasn't had it up to like you know his eyeballs with with fucking Saul at this point in their relationship. So it's nice to see them uh having this kind of heartfelt conversation. And um you're kind of left wondering what it is like cuz Saul quickly moves on when he's asked like what would you change in the decisions you've made in your life? He he doesn't want to talk to Mike about it. So we're kind of left wondering what that is. And I think I know. Um, it's never outright stated, but we'll get to it. Um, meanwhile, in the Gene timeline, he's getting arrested, right? And uh, this all trans uh, transpires pretty quickly. You know, he leaves Marion's house and she gets the full license plate. She uh she basically hands them right over to the cops. You think he might get away for a minute, like helicopter goes over, he goes in a tunnel. It's like, oh, you know, nice uh nice little getting around that, but uh it doesn't last long. He he hides in a dumpster, 
which is another callback to a previous episode. There are so many callbacks and references to both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul in this episode. It's it's a real ugh. Um, I I would love to go back and see if I could pick out every single one because even though I have like a whole notebook here filled with it, um, just the notes I've taken and I wrote like five full pages, you know, um. I'm I'm sure there's little things I missed like, you know we we saw like the uh, the foil that's remin in in the Saul and Mike scene that's reminiscent to Chuck you know, and then we get the buzzing later on. Anyway, um, he, Gene gets caught here and uh, and he gets taken to a jail cell and we once again see the Better Call Saul commercial. This time the cops are watching it and kind of looking over at him judgmentally. And I, and judgment is a big, like, you know, their uh, theme in this episode and in the overall series. You know, there's a lot of cops. There's a lot of, uh, um, what is it, courtroom stuff. Uh, and I remember seeing the image that they... Uh, that they released for this episode was like the scales of justice or, or maybe the scales of the better call Saul logo, but they were definitely tipped one way. So this is, uh, this is Gene Saul, Jimmy getting what's coming to him. And it's, uh, I'm kind of glad, like I said it in the first episode, uh, or first review I put out that this was the, um, this was going to be the downfall these last episodes and it surely was and even though you know we do get some great uh some great Saul moments in the upcoming scenes where he calls Bill Oakley you know who is a defense attorney now we learned that a couple episodes ago and uh convinces him <laughs> like the the greater scummy attorney convincing the lesser scummy attorney to take this case because of how good it could be for his career, but ultimately just embarrasses him in the courtroom um, with what ends up happening. But I loved the scene we we got uh, we saw Marie um, once again, uh, another cameo from Breaking Bad, and she lays into Jimmy basically, you know, telling him what happened with Hank with, um, I'm sure, you know, Jimmy knew this, with uh, Agent Gomez and, um, you know, giving him the old what for. And then at first you think, like, like you're like, all right, what's is he going to try to pull something here? Because, you know, he's he he hired Bill Oakley. He's talking in the jail cell, like, I can't believe this is how they got me. You're, you're thinking he's just going to pull, like, a Saul Goodman scheme, and he does. And I think he was going to stick to that scheme until the end of this scene where they tell him. And by the way, he gets it, he gets his sentence down to seven years, um, negotiating from like 180 or something. <laughs> he got himself all the way down to seven years um, because the lead... Uh, the lead prosecutor did not want to tarnish his perfect record of always making con a conviction. So he uh, he was able to get the sweetest plea deal, minus some uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, they're ready to they sign it. They're ready to take it to court, and they do. But in the courtroom, I do love uh love Saul's suit here. Um. Every uh, Blanca's there, Marie is there, and Kim is there. Uh, and uh, we think that we're just gonna watch Saul doing his thing in the courtroom one last time, but that's not what ends up happening. What ends up happening is he gives a full confession, much like Kim did. And I do like him uh, seeking approval and like looking back at Kim a few times, almost as if to ask her if he's doing the right thing. And I also appreciate that he, in the in the process, kind of like took the heat off of Kim, you know, and uh, took full responsibility for all his actions that we've seen transpire over uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul.
Like he he basically lays it out, um, including some things that aren't technically cr- uh, crimes, as Bill Oakley uh, put it. Well, not legally anyway. But Saul says, "Yeah, it is." When you know he he even talks about Chuck there, and I loved the scene with Jimmy and Chuck, where you know. Jimmy is, br- I think he's bringing Chuck his like groceries and things for the first time. And uh, there's this really sweet kind of interaction. Um, it's, it's almost as if this is the moment. And I think that this is the moment um, that Jimmy regretted the most. And I think that little nod with the Time Machine novel, the H.G. Wells novel, uh, was like the fact that Chuck was reading the Time Machine. This is the moment that Jimmy was thinking about whenever he brought it up with Walter and, um, and Mike. And that's another scene that we had. There was so much this episode. Um, we got to see Walter White for probably the last time in this, you know, not chronologically, obviously that would be like, you know, the last episode of Breaking Bad. But, like, you know, for the last probably piece of Breaking Bad content, unless they do something else in this universe, which is possible, you never know. Um, I don't think they will. I'm going to be honest. I think that last night might have been the last night that Walter White was on television. And it was a great scene because we got to see him at his worst and pettiest and most like curmudgeon y dick. Like, well, not as we remember him, but as he deserves to be remembered. Uh, <laughs> um, and speaking of deserving to be remembered, we're going to talk about Walter. No, no, no. I, I, I have a slide for this, so I'll, I'll go to it. I'll, I'll go to it after this. Um, Walter's regrets were with the Cray Matter Corporation, and I like that. Um, I feel like Saul was probably at a pretty low point at this point too, because he says his greatest regret was one of his Slip and Jimmy, um, uh, what is it like schemes where he injured himself and his legs never been the same since. And uh, I thought it was, you know, pretty ironic that Walter judges him in this moment. Oh, so you've always been like this. When in the grand scheme of things, Walter's a way bigger piece of shit. So that's like, you know, pots and kettles, right? Um, so the scene I wanted to talk about was this one here where Jimmy is on the bus and the uh because during the courtroom scene he asked to be like it's like no i'm i'm jim james mcgill or jimmy mcgill he says uh one of the two and uh and you know it's a very powerful moment but that is you know you part of like almost his penance is that like even though he did that for himself the world will always see him as better call saul as saul goodman so like the when when he's in prison the the inmates you know address him as Saul and this uh this scene here was pretty great when they all started chanting better call Saul once uh once they realized who he was and he you know at least he's you know going to have an okay time he's kind of like a prison celebrity so he'll probably you know be cordial with the dudes in there he he's able to talk his way in and out of stuff, so like he, you know, people will probably want to hear his stories, and he'll have he'll he'll make it okay in prison, especially since he did his full confession. He really didn't give anybody up, at least anybody who's alive. So they have no reason to not like you know, or kill Saul in prison or Jimmy or whatever you know. So. We end with him in prison, and he has he gets a visit from his lawyer, who ends up being Kim Wexler, because apparently her bar certificate hasn't uh, expired. I'm sure it's not called a certificate; it's a card or wh- whatever it is. Lawyer shit. Um. So she visits him, and there's a callback to season one where they share that cigarette together. Um. 
and they share a cigarette here. And I, I like how the ember is still, you know, in color. Um, not only does it do a great thing for the, uh, for the shot composition itself, um, I think it's representative. And this is just, you know, what I got out of it. This may not be, you know, the writers might come out and be like, well, actually, the cigarette represented... All the, all the fucking fires. I don't fucking know. In, in my opinion, what it represents is the spark between Kim and Jimmy is still alive. You know, it's still there. It's still lit. And even though Jimmy is going to have to live out his foreseeable future in prison, at least he has Kim who's visiting him and, you know... He's doing his time for a malfeasance. No, <laughs> for like all the all the awful shit he's done, and it's such a fitting end. Um, I enjoyed this episode so much, ten out of ten. Uh, and that is my review for Better Call Saul season six, episode thirteen, the finale. It's all gone. And it is. It is all gone. Um no more better call Saul. Ugh I my Mondays my Mondays no but uh I w I do have an announcement. If uh for all of you who have stuck around this long, thank you so much. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Um thank you for everybody who's been liking the video and sharing it. That means the world to me. Um, I really appreciate it. And, um, since these TV reviews have been, you know, doing well in comparison to some of the other stuff I've put out on the channel, I was thinking we keep this party going. And probably this week or maybe next week, you know. We are moving on to our next show, which is going to be Severance. I have, I'm already, listen, I've got over 25 pages of notes here on Severance. I am ready to do episodes one through five. And I, all I have to do is figure out whether I want to go episode by episode, even though, you know, I know what's going to happen at this point, but. If I want to go episode by episode, if I want to do three episode chunks, you know. So I am super excited to get into that. Um, I hope you come uh, catch this on Twitch sometime. Because I am super open to having like a little discussion here with, uh, with chat after I have like completed my review. And I'm sorry that I don't, you know, necessarily look over at chat while I'm doing that, but I do want to get the review out because it's gonna go on YouTube as well. Uh, anyways, once again, thank you, thank you, and I will see you guys very soon with the next video. It's gonna be Severance review episode one or one through three. We'll see. Uh, I I'm gonna kind of outline it see how it's gonna go this one was a little long kind of like the last one but these were the last episodes of better call Saul and they were dense and a lot was happening and there was a lot to discuss and there's more to discuss I hope you do in the comments below thank you so much for watching um if you're on twitch we'll be right back all right <laughs>